Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to John R. Leonetti about Lullaby in Select Theaters and On Demand on December 16th. Thank you so much for your time. No, oh, thanks for having me. I'm glad, I'm glad you got to check out the movie. And uh, thank you for the nightmares, as always. I mean, I feel like I have to start with that, right? I mean, your body of work continues just to scare us all the time. But hey, we need a good scare. I feel like, come on. Uh, you know, it's it's <laughs> it's a it's a platform for entertainment that that actually connects an audience to a screen in a story, and it's 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 just a wonderful thing to be a part of. Really, I mean, you know, making horror movies are are they're fun. That's all yeah. I can say. And and they, I think they they press a filmmaker to use a lot of tools in the bag, in the in the filmmaker's bag, because you know you you want to be able to in, engage the audience in the characters, invest them, and then get under the audience's skin and just fuck with them. Yeah, and it's absolutely. Fun to do. No, I have, so here's my question in regards to Lullaby and you kid. Relate this to your other like projects as well. The silence, I thought about this as well. So there's different yeah. ways to scare people these days. You know, there is the traditional gore and the traditional jump scares and the traditional horror. kind of tropes of horror, but people are scary. The psychological game. Why did this person say this to that person? Why? What's going on here, right? You right, get right. that a lot in this film. What is that mindset specifically with this film, knowing that the horror genre is evolving and there are different ways to scare people, John? You know, it's it's. I really think the this movie, this story, Lullaby, has an innate sense of horror that's a paradox where love create love for your baby and the, the and motherhood creates vindication and retribution that is that is horrific. Yeah. And it's power of love that creates. The horror, in essence, the horror that's in this movie, and and it's about what any any mother would do for their baby in, in that power. So starting with Lilith, Lilith and following it all the way through to Vivian, and the fact that she sends the 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 book to her sister, and that she takes she 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 takes her own she she bones her sister, and then and then you know uh, Rachel's going to go and probably bone someone else to get their baby. That sets th that thread. Is sets a very different, uneasy, I think, scenario. Yes. That's huge. Also, what was very different about this, I think, and nice is that it's not Judea Christian uh, mythology. It's ancient Hebrew, mm -hmm. and and I think that it gives it more depth. It, it's it's older, and it's maybe more believable um, that that Lilith really did exist. You know, so. I think there's that. The other, the two other things that are really important about it is I love that the fact that the portal was with a mirror, um, and and I'm, I'm I love to create things in camera. I like things to be as real as possible. Again, I always say the more realistic something is, and then the more natural it is, the more believable it is, the more believable it is, the scarier it will be in any scenario. And that was a really good tool to, I think, psychologically get under the audience's skin in camera because this was very real. So that excited me. And then, the, you know, the lullaby itself, the fact that, you know, I, it's ironic that lullabies are sung to blow babies to sleep. They're all dark as fuck. Yeah. And, and it, when I <laughs> did the script, I, I closed the last page and I went, you know, I want to make a title sequence that, <laughs> that you know, shows how dark these things are. And, it, and we do that. We intermingle it, you know, in the opening of the movie with <laughs> meeting Vivian. And it's, it's like, and that set the stage for the horror that's to come. A lot of those, like, songs for kids, Ring Around the Rosie, like... <laughs> Humpty Dumpty. I mean, did you, anyone you think about, they're all demented. It's, 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 I do, I do want to ask this because 
me, my friends and I, like spooky season, like ho- like October is a huge kind of right. moment for horror. me. Like I do horror. a movie every night horror. Like it's it's a big deal, right? So right. we always talk about this. You yeah. are part of what me and my friends call the horror boom, where horror movies have always been around, but movies like The Conjuring, Insidious, Annabelle, yeah. Yeah. it really kind of became monumental as a genre, in my opinion, at that time. You look yeah. at now and you look at where it is, what is it like kind of thinking about the fact that you were part of the kind of big kind of eruption of this genre that's inspired so many like filmmakers and got fans into it as well? Do you think about that at all? Well, you know, obviously a lot of credit has to go to James. Come yeah, on, James absolutely. You absolutely. know, I mean, big time. And he's, you know, he's the master of horror in, in our time. And I, I think, or, you know, that's just my opinion. And he's, and, and I, I did, I will say, I helped him uh, conjure uh, some, a lot of scares and a lot of fright. Um, and it was, it, and, but it came with wonderful. Great use of the word conjure there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, totally. And, and so I, I don't know. I, look, I wasn't even a horror movie buff, honestly. I, I just met James. We, we connected on Dead Silence. And then we did a movie, Death Sentence, which I don't know if you've seen it, but that movie is really good. I think it's one of James's best movies, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and and but we just connected, and so I think um, with thinking about Insidious, yes, was a training ground for the Conjuring. Um, in terms of the, it was like the, the the we created the recipe of a certain kind of realism, and on a bigger scale, we did the Conjuring. Yes, and and it was all about shooting it in continuity, keeping it very real. The lighting has to be totally natural and real until you, you know, it's like less is more until more is just enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I love the fact that I'm a part of all that. You know, look, I I go back to Tales from the Crypt and I was involved in the very first three, you know, the trilogy with Walter Hill. That was my first full real DP job, you mm-hmm. know, way back when. And those were, I mean, think about that. Those were, I think, pretty monumental in oh. and even for HBO, to even put HBO on the map for that Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. You know, um, yeah. whatever. I, I'm proud to be a part of, of, you know, at least setting the stage for others. I just want to say too, before we wrap up quickly, I mean, what you did, I don't want to go into spoiler alerts because but like what you did with the silence with the cell phone sequence in that movie was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. And I was on the edge of my seat panicking for that like, like seven, eight minute kind of sequence with everything. That was the most, and that's what you want with a horror movie. You really want that. And you do that. And you do that with this film as well. So I just wanted to say thank oh, you. <laughs> thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. You well, know this, what I'm talking about though, right? The cell phones? I mean, this oh, I know it really insane. well. You know, you know, honestly, how how innately, in a way, simple it was to do once you figured out how to do it. Yes. It's always about how figuring out how to do it. You know, it was so fun, really. And it... It, it it was a good crescendo for for the what what came before it to kind of show the the insanity that these people were, were trying to you know put over this family is this pretty cool oh absolutely and I can't wait for people to see Lullaby because it's gonna be in select theaters and it's gonna be on demand December sixteenth John it was an honor and privilege to speak with you thank you so much for your time. Oh. Thank you so much. Take no, care. No problem. It's been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is John R. Leonetti and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.